Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed with your responsibilities, and it seems like you'll never get it all done? Well, you're not alone. We all need to remember to use our superpowers, the ones we already have but don't use all the time, and take advice and wisdom from one another. Towards the end of the show, in a segment called Superpowers for Success, I ask my guest about her superpowers, and the answers will give you the strength, perspective, and power to keep on being the well woman you are. I'm so happy you're here, so thanks for tuning in. Today's topic is power and politics, and hopefully by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to have your voice heard, fight for the issues that matter to you, and consider the importance of hearing diverse opinions and experiences. My guest today is Deborah Holland, chairwoman of the Democratic Party of New Mexico. Deborah recently served as the delegation chair at the Democratic National Convention. As a member of the Pueblo of Laguna in New Mexico, Deborah is the first Native American woman to lead a major state party in the country. Prior to leading the Democratic Party of New Mexico, she became the first Native American woman to run for lieutenant governor in New Mexico. Today I speak with Deborah about the importance of diversity in politics, the issues about which she's passionate, and why participation in the political process is essential for women. The free giveaway today is the four steps to leading a well woman life. I love this handout because it gives you four easy steps to immediately take to start living a more full and joyful life. You can download it at wellwomanlife.com slash 036 show. I'm sitting this afternoon with Deborah Holland. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Um, As we heard in the introduction, you are the state party chair of the the Democratic Party in the state of New Mexico. Um, Tell me what you're working on and how it impacts women's lives. Sure. So I could start with my role as, as chairwoman of the Democratic Party of New Mexico. I'm an advocate for women because democratic values are really women's values. We understand the need for strong families, for access to economic opportunity, for equality, for equal pay, and for a woman's right to make her own health decisions. I'm proud to be a Democrat because we have such an amazing track record when it comes to women's issues, and we're always looking to empower women and push them to get involved in public service. Uh, For example, look at the Democratic ticket this year. We have a woman running for the highest elected position in the country, a woman running for Secretary of State of New Mexico, which is second in line to be governor, two women congressional candidates, and many more down ballot. Women have a great deal to offer. We have a valuable perspective that can drive solutions and make a difference for families across our state. And as a Native woman, which is a group that is particularly underrepresented, I have made it a personal obligation to represent our Pueblo and tribal communities. Okay. And I want to dig into a couple of things that you just mentioned. Um, The first thing is you, you talked about democratic values being women's values. What do you mean by that? So if you take a look at the Democratic Party platform, for example, we, we care about pay equality. We, want women, we don't want women to be paid less than men. We want women to have uh, power over their own health care choices. We want to make sure that um, women are just basically being advocated for. Uh, not to mention, you, you know, our equality across the board for our gay brothers and sisters. 
uh, we we just our platform is more in line with what women what will help women I think in their everyday lives okay and you also talked about women having a specific perspective that can help dry, find solutions and things um, what is that special perspective that women bring and do all women bring this so I mean I I, I suppose it matters somewhat uh, what your background or what your personal experiences are but when I think about what I bring or what I could bring to an elected position such as this one uh, I understand what it's like to raise a child and care about educational opportunities or the lack thereof I know what it's like to um, in my case to apply for food stamps for example when I was going to law school and and I didn't have a good enough paying job and so I, I think uh, there's a lot of women out there who you know they're taking care of their elder parents and they're working uh, you know a job or two and I think women like that would definitely bring a different perspective to an elected position and Deborah, as the party chair for a state, state of New Mexico, and you led the delegation to the Democratic Convention for the for the state of New Mexico, for listeners who may not be in New Mexico, they may be in a, a different state or even mm -hmm. a different country, mm -hmm. what was that like for you to have that leadership role? Well, I mean, I think it's it was a tremendous opportunity for me and and actually for New Mexico. I as the first Native American state party chair in the entire country. I think it speaks volumes for the diversity that we have here in New Mexico. Uh, we had uh, youth. We had Hispanic women, Hispanic men. We had uh, Native Americans and and. You know, I, I think that when you think about diversity, it's it's everyone having a part in their own future. And I really like that idea because I think we work well together. We're stronger together. And tell us a little bit about being on the convention floor, leading a, a delegation of people from a state to nominate the first woman president, uh, what was that like? Sure, sure. So, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, I think it's definitely worth noting that we have, after 240 years, we have a woman, a woman running for president. However, I don't think that's all. Uh, because Secretary Clinton is the most qualified individual to ever run for president. We've never had somebody run for president with all of her qualifications. And so, you know, if you watched her speech and she was naming off issues, if you care about gay rights, join us. If you care about pay equality, join us. If you care about education, join us. Choose your issue and join us because we will make sure that we work and fight for those things for you and your family. And um, I just think that was really significant. And was there a moment while you were at the convention where you, did you have a quiet moment where you were just sort of like, wow, here I am leading this delegation? Oh, absolutely. This oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's a spectacular experience, right? Uh, all these, you know, you see all these people in person pouring their hearts out on the stage, and uh, you might have watched uh, the flo uh, the first lady speech, and um, she the first night that started off the convention with a bang. She was so inspirational, and um, yes, you, you there are lots of quiet moments where you think to yourself, I'm fortunate to have this opportunity to go home and tell people how lucky we are to be Democrats and how proud we should all be to have these people inspiring us to 
do good work and, and make sure that, that, you know, our country has an opportunity. And what was so inspiring about Michelle Obama's speech? Well, first of all, <laughs> first of all she's, um, well, gosh, she's awesome. Um, uh, you know, I think the line that really gets me, and, and I heard her say this when she spoke here at the Santa Fe Indian School in Santa Fe um, for their commencement address, uh, she mentions the fact that she lives in a house that was built by slaves. And I didn't realize how important it was for our country to elect the first African-American president until I heard that line when she spoke it in May at the Santa Fe Indian School. Because I think it's so important to have different perspectives leading our country. And that was, I think, that was really significant. She said that at the convention, too. Yeah, that was a really powerful moment. Um, so is it important to you to get more women of color elected to office? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and sure. If we, guess, have an, if we have that opportunity, we should take it. How, like, how are you working towards that? So um, I'll give you one example. We currently have a rural and tribal initiative within the party where we're working to get out to rural communities and Native American communities to register voters, to have a visual presence there. Um, because I think that if you're visible and people have an opportunity to come and speak with you, that um, if they're inspired, they'll come back and they'll want to volunteer. And to me, that's the first step of public service is volunteering. And if you want to go into, um, you know, if you want to think about a life of public service in the political realm, um, volunteering is the first step. And we want to get as many folks on board that way as we can because when they volunteer, you have an opportunity to teach them something or to make them aware of something they weren't aware of. Mm. So, And Deborah, I know your road to becoming the state party chair has been an interesting and a difficult road as well. You've had challenges throughout your life. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you now to be in this position? Well, when we think about perspective, uh, if we back up a little bit, I, I started out as a volunteer. And um, I guess my, most, my, my very first significant volunteer role was when I decided to volunteer. I was a full-time volunteer for four months for the Obama campaign in 2008. And I made that decision to ensure that New Mexico voted for him. And then that led to an opportunity to be a paid staffer in 2012. And so I just learned so much. I mean, you learn some really incredible skills when you work on a campaign like that. And um, so... I think what preceded my role as state party chair uh, is, you know, thousands of hours of volunteer work and knocking at thousands of doors and phone calls and, and all of that. And really, um, campaigning in Indian country is a little bit different than, you know, picking a city and, and walking neighborhoods because everything's so spread apart. So as as I was working in Indian country in both 2008 and 2012, uh, I drove a lot around New Mexico. So I had opportunities to meet people all over the state. And, and I, f I feel like that those experiences helped me a great deal with the job I'm doing now because I, I kind of have an idea of what, you know, what the environmental climate is of. And... Deborah, can you talk a little bit about, I mean, we're on the Well Woman Show, so mm -hmm. we, we do talk to women leaders about how they do what they do and how they maintain their own wellness and well-being while they're doing it all. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about a time in your life when you didn't put yourself first, when you weren't taking care of yourself the way you probably now know that you need to? Sure. 
So, um, so I'm really lucky to have a strong woman role model in my mother. She, gosh, she, she was pretty tough. Uh, and she taught me to be strong. And in our Pueblo culture, when you're taking care of your community and you're taking care of yourself, uh, you're taking care of your family, then everything's fine. You don't, I mean, it's not really that we're a unit, so to speak. And so as long as everyone's okay, you're okay too. And um, when I think about our ceremonies that we have uh, every year, though, for a reason, those are to make sure that our community is operating and that we're, you know, our crops will be successful and, and that people will have the blessings they need to move forward. So I kind of feel like my cultural and traditional values um, intertwine with how I keep myself well. And, and can you give us some specific examples about what you might do to, sure. to stay well? Especially, I have to say, like, you know, you're in campaign season, like full on. It's so hard. I've worked on campaigns. Um, it's so hard to eat healthy, to take care of yourself. You're <laughs> to eat healthy, like get around plenty of rest. the clock. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so what I do to take care of myself, I really do try to limit my intake of fast food. I think that's that's a terrible habit to get into. I drink lots and lots of water. I run every morning or at least five mornings a week because I I think I need, if I'm going to be sitting in a chair making phone calls all day, I should at least have, you know, an hour's worth of exercise to back me up for that. So, so definitely if you, you know, I think the, the worst thing that people do is they don't set aside time in their schedules to exercise and, you know, you got to get your blood pumping. You have to get you have to you have to get your exercise in. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're moving into a segment that we call superpowers for success. Sure. And so I want to ask you a few questions. First one is, what does success in life mean for you? What does success in life mean for me? Well, I mean, personally, right now, I could say that. My daughter, who is a senior at UNM, I look at her as being successful, and that makes me super happy, and I feel successful because she's going to graduate, she cares about justice and equality, she recycles, and... She doesn't, you know, she cares about her footprint and what she's leaving for, you know, future generations, I guess. So, um, so if I look at her, I always feel really super successful. It's nice to know that your kids actually learn something from you. Yeah. And when your kids are doing well, you feel like everything's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, Deborah, when did you know you were really good at what you do? Well, I think, I mean, if I, if I, you know, I can base so much of my life on, on my involvement in politics because that's what I've been doing for a long time. And, you know, in 2008 and again in 2012, we got out about 60% of the Indian vote because we worked really, really hard. And, um, I was really proud of that fact. So it's, you know, in the in Democratic Party politics is one place where you can work super hard and and quite often, not always, because I've worked hard and haven't gotten the results I wanted also, but um, quite often you can really feel good about the outcomes because, you know, it's successful. The hard work pays off. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a good example of, of being validated by an external result. You know, like you worked hard, you saw the result, you felt good about it, you, were, you thought, I'm really good at what I do. 
It, was there ever a, a point where that was internal, where you thought to yourself, in that quiet, sort of inside place, deep down, like, I am really good at this? I, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever felt that way. I, you know, so much of what I do is because of other people. And, you know, I, like, I'll give you an example. I get whenever I ran for state party chair, so many people said, why are you doing that? It's a thankless job and, you know, you're going to hate it. And, and actually there's been a quite a number of people who have thanked me for the job I'm doing and who, who were happy with the job I'm doing. However, I would never be able to do it without my staff. So I have this wonderful staff and we're very small. There's only three of them and one of me. Well, actually we have four now. Uh, there's four of them and one of me. And, um, you know, I give 90% of, <laughs> of our success to them because they're the ones who were, you know, making my vision into reality. So, um, so you know, I, I want to be careful about patting myself on the back if that's, if that's what that kind of means because... I think you always owe a debt of gratitude to somebody or some people, and you should always express that when you have the opportunity. Mm. And what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? Superpower. Superpower. Um, well, I don't know if this is a superpower or not, but I think all women have the ability to be inspirational. And by inspiring people, you might lead them to do something good for someone else. And that keeps that chain of helping people going. So to, to get a little bit more personal, you inspire people. I, I've seen you inspire people. You you when you speak and when you relate and connect and and do what you do uh, would you call that your superpower well sure i guess so <laughs> i guess so you know after i did the announcement at, at the national convention uh, i i had gotten a special indian dress made for the occasion because i wanted to i wanted to show pride in who I was as a Pueblo woman. And afterward, I got lots of tweets, and, and one of the tweets um, mentioned that a young girl was tweeting that she wanted to get a dress just like mine. Right? Isn't that sweet? And so if I can inspire that young girl to get a dress like mine and to get involved in her community, then I'll take that the, any minute of the day. Okay, great. And I want to ask you about resilience mm -hmm. and about what you do when you get knocked down, when, you ha when something happens that just throws you off your track. Um, how do you deal with that? What do you do? I do, well, I talk to people about it. You know, I have people that I trust that I can basically um, talk things out with, right? Maybe it's called venting. You just want to get it off your chest so that it's not weighing you down. But I think it's always good to get things off of your chest no matter what it is. If it's bothering you, you have to get rid of it because it will crush you if you don't. Um, but, you know, my parents, as I was, when I was growing up, my parents were very strict. My dad, I, my dad was a 30-year career Marine. Uh, my mom had been a veteran in the Navy, and she was she was a she was just a tough woman. She worked hard, and and she didn't really put up with a lot. And I guess I just learned from my parents that you know you just keep going. You don't you don't you don't give up easily. You know, I my dad was in Vietnam for two years and, and after he passed away we opened up his footlocker and, and read a lot of things about his military career that he never shared with us and he could have died over there. 
but he didn't because he was smart and he was resilient, right? And, and so I feel like I need to honor his sacrifices too. Mm-hmm. Um, what advice would you give your 25 or 30 year old self? I would advise myself to get involved. When I was that young, I wasn't thinking of too much externally. And if I could if I could tell myself at that age that my involvement could make a difference in people's lives, I would definitely have done that. Because I didn't get involved till much later. And I feel like I could have already accomplished a lot more if I had done it sooner. Mm-hmm. But we do things in a in a certain order maybe and we get we we accomplish things because of that, right? So maybe if you had done it earlier, things would have been different. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, I wanna ask you a couple other quick quickies here. Okay. Do you identify as a feminist? I don't know. Probably. I mean I don't know. I I I That seems a little bit of an old-fashioned word in a way, right? Because I know there's a lot of women who have fought a lot harder than I have for a lot longer, and I am reaping the benefits of the sacrifices that they made. I mean, just when I think about my right to vote, it was challenged, right? And women went through horrible things to give me that right, and and, and a and in addition to that, Native Americans couldn't even vote in New Mexico until 1948. So I realized that I owe a debt of gratitude to the women who came before me, and I intend to pay it as long and hard as I can. Um, so if being a feminist means that women should have equal <laughs> pay and that they should get just as much in return for the hard work that they do, then yeah, I'm a feminist. And lastly, what's on your nightstand? What are you reading right now? Okay, so I'm reading a book called The Roundhouse. It's by one of my favorite authors, Louise Erdrich. She's a Native American author. I've read lots of her other books. It was written in 2012. And um, it's it's a it's it's a good book. <laughs> it's a little um, disturbing, but um, but it's good. Is so, it political? No, it's 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 a it's um, it's about violence and and equal. You know, it, it, I guess you could say that Native Americans being are having the ability to be protected by the law when it comes to crimes. Sounds heavy, but... It, that is heavy. It's good. Do you do, you do any light reading? Never? <laughs> <laughs> the book I read before that... Well, actually, I do. I have, I've read lots and lots of books. I like poetry, too. I found a Jimmy Carter book at, at a at a yard sale a couple months ago. It's a nice Jimmy Carter book. It has his picture on the front, so I think I'm going to read that next. (laughs) Deborah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Giovanna. Really appreciate you coming by. That's it for our show today. I've been speaking with Deborah Holland, chairwoman of the Democratic Party of New Mexico and the first Native American woman to lead a major state party in the country. I spoke with Deborah about the importance of diversity in politics, why community building is so important for progress, and where she hopes to see politics in New Mexico and the U.S. go. You can get the free giveaway at wellwomanlife.com slash 036 show. The awesome team at Well Woman Life has created an annual retreat that serves as a rejuvenating and empowering place to revisit your inner power and connect with other powerful women, all while being pampered by beautiful surroundings and delicious healthy food. It's called the 2016 Well Woman Superpower Retreat, and it will be October 26th, all day long at Los Poblanos in Los Ranchos in Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
If you haven't gotten your ticket yet, go to wellwomanlife.com slash events slash retreat for more information. Also, if you're a regular subscriber to the show and you haven't left a review yet, please go to iTunes and leave a review. It's super helpful for getting the word out about the show and sharing the content with other women. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings together women to share our successes and challenges as leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email me at info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes. And while you're there, leave a review. This helps raise visibility for the show, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week for you. You can also continue the conversation in the Well Woman Life community group at facebook.com slash groups slash Well Woman Life community. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.